Hello everyone. Eminence Front X5 and Larry Wood here. I'm reporting back to you guys from a place called Death Valley Junction. Check that guy out. Yeah? So I took pictures of this and I put them online. I haven't done any video on this area or this building. Uh, it's just one building. However, this is it. He's got permission from the Amorosa Hotel to come and visit the mill site. Let's go take a look on the inside, what do you say? Look, there's a chair. Isn't that shocking? This place is uh, has wood floors, as you can see, and some concrete. Looks like this was the entry area, concreted. Front door. Then you went into the hardwood area. Sorry for all the desert detritus. It's not even desert detritus, it's just garbage. <clears throat> the graffiti is terrible. Sorry, everyone. Even though it's good things, it's still, that should not be done right there. It's really sad, so. Fall in love, have you noticed, with the desert? So, I have gotten permission to go inside of the mill site here in Death Valley Junction. And let's go take a visit and see what that's all about. I got a ways to walk, so check it out. Um, I got a ways to walk, so I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in on things as I pass them. Our first discovery. There are ponds out here. There were ponds, so, hmm. Why would they have ponds at a mill? Huh. What I do know is they used volcanic rock that's found out here, because this is a volcanic area. Um, they use the volcanic rock as well as uh, other things inside the mill to crush up the borax as it comes in. The borax, by the way, um, just a little information. The borax is low-grade borax. That's why they have this mill here. The bor uh, borax would come into this mill low-grade inside the ore. They crush it up with these volcanic uh, uh, rocks and in a tumbler. And what they would do with that stuff is uh, they would concentrate the borax a little bit more than what was found in nature, making it higher grade borax, more valuable on the market. This is a historical site, everyone, so you, you really shouldn't be even moving stuff. But this is really cool. Um, I'm not gonna mess with it. Uh, some kind of box, metal box. It's cool that you can walk through here with permission. It's really, really cool. Looks like we have our first sighting of bolt hole over here. <laughs> It's just part of the, oh, no, these aren't bullet holes. These are, uh, huh, very interesting. Uh, but these holes down here are, look like uh, some kind of pitchfork, kind of big, big, kind of hammer type thing going into it several times. Uh, it must have had liquid in it of very thick viscosity, uh, probably for the mill. Very interesting. Three, like, water heaters of some sort. I don't know what the one on the left is, that big gray one, but it's interesting. Wow. Okay, so, I'm looking at this guy. It has a ball end to the end, to the end and it has a, uh, a threaded piece on this side, looks like there's an adjuster. 
uh, replace the clamp down onto, or maybe that's just how they connected it. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, that big stuff like this, you know, what the, where was this thing placed? Did bad things happen when this fell off? <laughs> I would think so. Anyway, here's our first build. Check it out. Hey, dual fine. I'm telling you guys, you're missing, you're missing it. This is an hour outside of Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, I got you beat on this one, guys. You couldn't even get into your ghost town. I'm walking around. And I'm gonna be going inside here in a second. Let's go inside and check it out. Looks like they're working on it, maybe restoring it somehow. But we're welcome to come in, so let's go check it out. This looks like the front door, of course. Three steps in the front. Boom, boom, boom. Wow, look at that fireplace. So this was a, uh, a front patio, covered, closed. They are doing repairs, so. Good. There's the mill site. All the foundations still there. The water towers are still there. Some of the holding tanks. They also used a lot of clay to help concentrate and filter out a lot of the ore from borax so maybe that's what that big bottom container is. So the Tonopah and uh, Tidewater, Tidewater Tonopah, also call, called the TNT Railroad, the junction was here for the Death Valley Railroad but mainly it was carrying this ore in and out of this town, not ore out but more borax out, the byproduct of the ore. In here, let's check it out. Let's back out. Tiki Trex, she taught me how to do this. If you're wondering where I learned how to do what I'm doing, check her videos out. She has like four years of videos of her exploring abandoned places a long time ago, folks. She was like the pioneer of this. The queen of explorer is Tiki Trex. For me, at least. Look at that fireplace. Isn't that nice? That is a beautiful fireplace right there. That chair. Maybe a little more leather. That fireplace, raging. And not raging, maybe just a nice little glow, maybe medium sized flame, and a nice stogie. People, that right there. Doom. Okay, walking down this hallway, this is a door out to the patio that we were just at. Going into this first room. There's another door there. It's closed for some reason. My apologies for the graffiti. Barely call it graffiti, it's so freaking ugly. Okay. 
rather pretty in here. So yeah, it's a pretty old building in here. I can tell by the architecture, the doors, the hinges. It's all very strange to me. I would say 1910. This is a small room of some sort. Leading off this first room that we were just in, going into this little closet area that connects to another room. Look at that small window. Closet, possibly? Looks like this. There used to be a wall here. As you can see the top. Maybe this were back to back. It was split in half. So this would be one closet for one room. And that door there, this entry, goes into this closet on their side. So yeah, I'd probably put that or maybe that. I don't know how to tell. I don't see any pipe in there. Or a faucet or even a toilet. So, hmm. I should wonder what's in here. Thinking maybe uh, someone has some Taco Bell before they <laughs> use the bathroom and blew up the wall. Anyway, so that's it. Let's go out through the uh, the Taco Bell bowl. <laughs> We did. This whole another part of the house. Concrete with wood around it. Kind of interesting. This must have been the outside at one point and they had it on. Oh yeah, we peeked into this. I remember this now. Yeah, we were blocked off by that. So we did not go through here. Let's check it out. Gotta watch out for the glass. I just almost stepped on another plate. a water heater. This kind of ends right there. There's there's no doorways, but uh, I don't know a patio again. Maybe an atom, wood floors, totally enclosed. Very narrow. Back in the room, all the floors. 
So this has been the kitchen, huh? I see electrical on the wall. Straight ahead. And I see some uh, faucet outlet right there. Some kind of furnace up there, or chimney. I'm assuming that would... Is somebody a stove, possibly? We're not allowed to go into that. I won't say what that is. That's all I'm saying. We're back at the water heater. An access hole for something. Gas it looks like they put through here. Kind of hard to tell what this was, but uh, maybe the bathroom. Hard to tell. It definitely looks like a, a bathroom area right there. That's the water coming in, just fresh water in. And then they have the toilet bowl there. Probably what it was. Very... Hey, look, how are pro, right? Very tiki looking. And the bamboo with the, the ferns in front of it. That's totally tiki tricks. How cool is that, folks? Oh, I hope you're watching Tiki Tricks. You taught me well. Okay, so, and what I mean by that, taught me well, I watched almost every one of her videos several times already. They're just so entertaining to watch. To me, that is. She's really good at what she does. We got a lot to explore. We should really move on. Okay, so our next stop, this was interesting. We got a whole garbage pit to go through over here. And just do a kind of a cruise of where we're gonna be heading today. It's very hard for me to see in this monitor, but I think I'm pointing right at the garbage pit we're gonna be checking out. We're also gonna be checking out some of this debris out here. And right there, dead center, is where the mill was and the water towers that were facilitating that mill. Found it's safe. <gasps> There's money in it. <laughs> That'd actually be a problem, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're on federal land and found money. <laughs> Probably not even supposed to be out here. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead, guys and gals, we're gonna go ahead and go into the mill area, the foundation of the mill. There's quite a bit of it strewn about. So let's go check it out. So to help combat the overheating issue with the camera I'm having today, I've turned the monitor way down and uh, I can barely see, so. <clears throat> I'm telling you, every step of the way at this trip, either it's sound, got the sound issues, barely fixed up, now I'm having freaking camera and heat issues, and I'm, it's just starting to get hot. Man, it's nice to be able to walk on a huge piece of concrete, after all that dirt. Uh, another modern convenience. Smooth surfaces. Holy moly. Okay. Bird right there. Whew, those things were made in the 18, late 1800s, folks, when this was a railroad station. We're probably standing on one of the platforms of the railroad station. Sure shit, right there. That's the Tonopah, uh, the TNT railroad that goes out that, that direction. You can see the light poles or the power poles right there. So these power poles. ran right next to the railroad. You can see the trestle that it, these poles are kind of straddling. Isn't that interesting? And that way as well, 
when you go this direction, and those power, power poles down there are modern, but they are on the same path that the old ones were, going up towards uh, Death Valley Junction. Interesting, huh? It also appears on top of this hill that, I'm zooming in folks, watch out, I can't see what I'm doing. Uh, there used to be some kind of structure. I'm not sure what, but the legs are still there. Looks like maybe that's where they were dumping the, uh, the spoils of the ore. Maybe a tram ran out there from the mill itself out to there. I'm not sure. Whoa. So I just woed because the ground just gave way right there. hollow. Something's under there. It's kind of scary. It, it moved on my foot. It, it let go. Um, yeah, so there's some, some tanks here. What's going on down there? That worries me. Uh, yeah, these tanks look cool. So this is the foundation of the plant itself. It was humongous or the platform of the train, but I don't think so. I think the train was running right there in that slab. I'll have to look at pictures in the hotel. Now that I've been out here, I can get a better sense of what's going on. Let's go check out some of this stuff over here. This looks like a uh, foundation for heavy machinery because how it's stacked and they have big metal rods coming out. Threaded most likely. I see a nut on one of them over there. Okay, so here's more evidence of the ground cracking underneath. Given way or something. It's not sturdy concrete. Yeah, they had a lot of machinery here. This is probably where they had a lot of the, the heavy stamping machines with the mill presses themselves. It fascinates me, this stuff. You know, it's, it's very simple production management. It goes in this side and it comes out that side. Oh, this brick. It's probably where they were heating it all up, making it brittle so that it's easier to crush. That's the only thing I can guess. Um, I'm not a pro at how they ran mills, but I know a little bit. Enough to get in trouble. I would never try to run one, but I kind of get the idea. Next stop, that building, as my neck burns off the side of my freaking body. Let's make our way over to this building and get some shade and cool off for a second. Get some water. I hope they have beer here. It's, it's a couple days later. Um, what has happened is uh, the weather's gotten in the way. Not rain, but heat. Um, my camera's been failing in the high temperatures. Uh, 102 degrees and up, direct sunlight, no shade. The camera's live view fails or overheats. Okay. The only thing that happens is the video stops. And uh, well, that's a longer story, I guess. But we got a couple things to do today. The reason why I'm out here today is it's cool right now. It's expected to get to 104 degrees today and uh, the rest of the week, as far as I can see. Um, I think Google is predicting 10 days of 100 degree plus weather. 
Yeah, it's gonna be difficult. I have to get this stuff done quick and I got a ways to go. Here we are, first building. Check the sucker up. Ouch, that hurt. It's a bush right there. It's probably some kind of uh, storage hut of sorts. Not much to it. Four walls. Probably a cement ceiling as well. And the, of course, the, the seat. The lone shovel. It's really light. Outlet. Whoa, there's an old door. You can see that earlier. You know, the, uh, the acoustics in here are insane. <laughs> Super bassy. Oh, there's a lot of, a lot of rat crap in here, too. Oh, look at that hand. It's definitely from, uh, from the mill days, because that would, that would hook up to the hand there. Very cool. Very, very cool. Probably just some kind of storage area. Beautiful day this morning. These towers, uh, I was told these towers are for the railroad, but uh, I kind of disagree with that. Um, I'm pretty sure that these towers here help supply the plant with the water they needed to uh, to separate out the minerals. Um, and from that, it goes downhill, um, meaning uh, probably over to that tank there. So, you know, water running downhill kind of idea. You never really want to take the water back uphill to keep it going down. So that's my theory, uh, is that they were smart enough to start uphill with the fresh water. And then as the water gets used and filtered uh, minerals, they kind of get deposited into holding tanks where they settle. Those holding tanks, after the minerals settle, uh, then they go and uh, take what they need uh, as the minerals will settle in, in different layers. Anywho. And here's where I left off, is at this, uh, this beautiful building. Like, why would they leave this building here? <laughs> I tried looking in, and sure enough, there's a big, huge steam uh, tank. And uh, the reason why I think this is still here and covered up is they were using asbestos back then. And uh, any explorer out there will know that that's not good stuff for you to be breathing in or causing dust with so what do you do with it leave it alone <laughs> let it rot in the desert I guess but uh, exploring inside this building could be hazardous to your health uh, I keep going back to my bloody nose incident I'm really cautious about what I'm breathing in and uh, yeah I think next week I'm buying a respirator here's where we left off I have not gone through any of this debris and I haven't showed you guys anything about this building here. So let me go ahead and let's go walk around this building. It's a beautiful little building. Again, it's a beautiful morning out. There's the resident crow. During the power line. Very loud, very vocal this morning. Probably remembers me from two days ago, three days ago.
beautiful little old building. I'm really kind of drawn by this thing. I don't even know why. It's one hell of an ugly building, but it's a beauty. It's like they... It's like they built the building around it. At this very top here in this corner, you can kind of see the top of the, uh, the tank. It's rusting. I'll poke the camera in there in a minute to show you guys what's going on with that. There's not really anything in there except a lot of bracing to hold up that tank, which I'm pretty sure was a steam tank. They were powering something with steam. Back in the early 1900s, that would make sense because, well, they didn't have a lot of the things we have now, power-wise. So steam power is still even used today on aircraft carriers, but not bad. Here's the inside. Now up above is that tank. There, you can kind of see it up there. But it's being held up by all these bracings, these 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 uh, pylons, and uh, it's it's nicely done. It needs to work hard in here. Now the wind is to my back. It's going into this structure through this hole. And uh, I don't mind poking the camera in there, but there's no way in hell I'm going in there. Uh, one, that tank must weigh like several tanks worth of weight. Uh, that thing's absolutely huge. It goes the full length of this building. So if you can imagine a piece of steel that could hold high pressure steam, yeah, that's gonna be heavy. And I'm not going to be crawling around underneath it. But cool, nonetheless, that it's still here. So let's go check out some of this, uh, some of these power lines. Now, you see these power lines coming down. That was from the Tonopah Tidewater uh, Railroad as it came in and out of this, this location. Pretty cool. Oh, also the uh, Death Valley Railroad. This, this was the junction for those two railroads. That's where they met up. So materials would come in through the railroad and go out on the railroad. And some of the things they'd reload onto the trains were borax going out. So pretty cool stuff. And ore coming in. So yeah, this was the spot. This was a, a pretty hot spot for a while. Okay, so here's one of the power lines. We'll walk over to one of the trestles here in a second. But this power line is from those days back when they used this railroad, folks. Uh, there's these things are not being used now, as you can see. The, the lines are pretty broken. But um, as you go through Death Valley, coming up 127, you'll see a lot of these really old power uh, power poles, and that's really kind of showing you where the railroad tracks used to be. Uh, I find it fascinating to see this stuff just sitting out in the desert all these years later. I did a video of a place called Renoville out near Baker, California, just south of here. I would say, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. A gentleman named Charlie Reno, who was a telegraph operator uh, back in the day and for the TNT Railroad, he would use these lines. His communications, Morse code, were coming through these lines. Morse code being the, the language that they were using to communicate through these lines. They didn't have telephone. Yeah. So, pretty darn cool to see this stuff. Charlie Reno's messages were going through these lines at one point, through these telephone, uh, these power poles. I'm just, I'm kind of giddy about that. That's pretty cool. Man, this stuff goes on forever. So as you can see, uh, or not, it's really hard to see in this monitor, but on this side, there's modern power poles, and they go all the way down. They kind of loosely follow where the old ones were, but uh, not really. And if you travel through this area, you'll see what I mean. Different parts of Death Valley, you see them close together, like here. You see that, uh, that power line there, that old power pole, and then the new ones over here. They get pretty close, but uh, not always. Just amazing. This is just absolutely amazing. This blows me away. Uh, try and figure out where the trestle came in. I would think that they would put it 
on this side, but I'm not sure. I have to poke around a little bit. Looks like this is a wash. Probably a half mile out. Wow, this place is absolutely a huge sight. I'll try and walk it this morning, but I see a burnt out car down there. That's probably something that. This looks like part of a railroad. Possibly. Not sure. I think we're approaching eight or nine o'clock right now in the morning. And I would say it's about, I don't know, 85, 90 degrees out. I'm sweating right now. Uh, why do I have my hat on, Larry? Well, I got my hat on because I don't want to get my head all burnt off. Um, last time I was out here, I reached this building. And uh, that building, the steam building that is, my, my strap on my camera, around my neck was burning my neck. I had to take the strap off and put it onto my shoulder. Even at that, through the clothing, I felt how hot that strap was. Um, we're talking the camera strap, folks. How does a camera strap start burning you? Um, well, here's a Chevy Impala front end. Not quite sure what year. It's the 60s, I believe. And, uh, it's the front end. Doesn't look heavily damaged. It looks like it's been on fire. And... But it doesn't look like it's been in a front end collision. And you'll understand why I'm bringing that up here in a second. Because I thought this thing belonged to this frame, which is upside down on the ground. Um, I mean, this thing's crumpled up. This is whacked out. Um, this would be the front end of the car, and it's, oh, you know what? It looks like it's been rear-ended, so it could be part of the Impala. Hard to tell. Man, my mouth is really starting to bother me, the taste. A lot of old stuff out here, guys. Look at this. What are these things? All these little springs. These wouldn't be bed springs. These are too small. Much, much, much too small for that. Super cool. Look at this stuff. I'll try and figure out how it was used. These old valve springs. They look like valve springs. Really old ones. Here, here's a spark plug. Wow, that's a, that sucker. You see Delco. 74. Very cool. This stuff talks to me. I don't know why, it just does. It makes me want to come out here and look at this stuff all day. But I know it's already hot and uh, I probably have another hour or two left here before I have to exit. This weather really bothers me. As much as I love it out here, I need cooler weather. I just can't operate in 100 
plus degree weather out here. Some more modern stuff out here. It looks like people do occasionally come out here and dump, but uh, let's see here. No more Andy Warhol art soup. How about some vans? tell because the rust is eaten through it. It's so weird. It's really bizarre. This old mattress is just completely just, just broken down to nothing. <laughs> Maybe insulation, I don't know. What is this? What's this? This doesn't look like much. A little mound of dirt. It's not really dirt though. I mean, well, yeah, it's dirt, but it looks like it's been processed. It's very uh, different from the surroundings. Um, it's obviously piled up. They have these pylons up here. God, I hope this stuff is not toxic. Um, excuse me. So yeah. They were, they were piling it here for some reason. It's very soft, very, uh, yeah, they were trying to hold it down with cabling and everything. They were fighting it, whatever they were dumping here. Gives me a good vantage point from up here though. Um, Whew, this place is big. I, I still got a ways to go. I got at least, you see these power poles? I've got four of them to go. One, two, three, about four of them. I see stuff clear out to the fourth one. Ooh, ooh wee, this is big. There's, there's, oh man, I'm telling you. It's almost like a big, huge trash dump. Let's go check more out. I can't make out what this little mound was, but they were dumping stuff here. Okay guys, I think what I'm gonna do is leave this area for now, for later, and head over to what I'm thinking is causing my mouth to be all tangy. Yuck, I didn't bring my water with me. I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble. I didn't bring my water, like an idiot. Knowing this half the battle though. So I forgot my water guys and what will happen with that is I will not be able to stay out here very much longer in heavier heat. And I would say if I was gonna try and stay out for two hours, I would probably not make it. I would probably have to go back and get the water. Now walking back to the car from here is a good 15 minute walk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Looky here. Look at that beauty. Look at this guy. Thank you. The color, the purple. Oh, that is really pretty out here. I don't know if the camera's getting that or not, but it's a really light purple. And it looks like a desert color. <laughs> Pennzoil? What? When's the last time you guys saw a Pennzoil can? That sucker's in there too. SAE 20. Pennzoil. Very cool. <laughs> okay, here's the can, and uh, here's a volcanic rock. These volcanic rocks. Uh, were used in the mill. The mill used these rocks to, uh, instead of ball bearings, the uh, large ball bearings that you'd sometimes see, they had a tumbler in which they just loaded these volcanic rocks and it would pulverize, as it tumbles, it would pulverize the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the borax. 
And with that, they would uh, they'd filter it out. After they crush it, they would start filtering with water, sediments, settles differently uh, in the tanks. And uh, yeah, that's the basic idea of what they were doing. They were crushing up rock and filtering out the minerals within those rocks ore. Very cool. But yeah, these rocks are all over this place. It's, it's a natural rock that you find in this area. They just use the natural resources to, to uh, crush the, the ore up into the minerals that they were looking for. So yeah, kind of interesting. Very interesting. Now, I read that they use clay a lot to filter out a lot of the minerals in the, in the ore. The slurry, but, uh, Okay, let's try and figure this out. Right there is where we were. That's where that first mound was. Here's a second ramp of, of uh, debris or material. Where is it coming from though? And it looks like it was coming from here. What is this? Looks like they were digging stuff up here. Or they were processing it. Oh, ooh, soft, really soft, quicksand. A lot of water is running through here. That could be from anything though, but this definitely looks like, I don't know. They were, they were filtering something. I gotta be careful because this looks like mine activity to me. These piles of dirt that shouldn't be here, that are ramped up, like they were pulling it out, dumping it over here. I see pieces of wood sticking out of the dirt down there. We'll go investigate that in a minute. But I gotta try and figure out what they were doing with this dirt. They were, they were processing the dirt. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm seeing, but uh, there's burlap bags all over this thing. Um, hmm. You seen that? Walk up onto it. You can see a little tie right there. But it's part of the burlap bag. This material in here is burlap. So there's a bunch of it in here. It's like a whole bunch of burlap bags were stacked up over here. Why? It's hard to walk on this. My feet just go right on through. Ay ay ay. Just a bunch of it. Okay, one thing I can try to guess is that they were reprocessing this dirt from over here. There looks to be mines over here. Much like there's a little spring it looks like right over here. Conveyor belt. They would make really cool canvas to paint on. There's a belt. Some power belt of some sort. And here are some pylons. And a foundation. What the hell is a foundation doing out here?
Unknown. But cool, nonetheless. The mystery of these places. I like it. I like not knowing everything. Knowing just enough to understand how it was working. This is obviously where they were processing the... What do you call it? I forgot what they call the byproduct of the... Uh, or they're pulverizing. But the unused parts end up here. Non-valuable ore. Like mineral speed ore. Ore. No telling what this was for. But as you can see, there's a huge chunk taken out right here. And I think that huge chunk of dirt made its way over there, where they were processing it again. They were probably trying to see if the uh, the old miners didn't get everything, I guess. But why would you be searching for borax here? They were concentrating the borax at this site, at this mill, to make it more valuable and usable. Yeah, you know. The taste in my mouth has gotten really bad. The closer I've gotten to this thing, I'm gonna go down to the clear end, and what I'll do is, I don't have any water with me. I will uh, walk up it, and if I can walk up it, I'll be out of the dust. Right now, that it's blowing right on to me. We're gonna try to get up this ramp. It looks like it starts right about here. There's two of them, it looks like. Woo, this is big. So on this side, <laughs> It looks like it's a, a very narrow mound, but it's not. Look how wide this is. It goes from way over there to here. So let's check it out. So I believe this wood that's left over up here was part of a either conveyor system or a way to get this material that you see in the ground up here. And as you can see, it ramps up. So as they as they kept on milling the ore, this byproduct, oh man, it kills me not to remember the name of this stuff, but the byproduct would land here and they just keep extending it out. You, as you can see, they kind of stopped right here and they started over here and went back up again. So right here is where they made an adjustment. If you do come out here and you want to explore it, check with the Amorosa, Amorosa Hotel. They, uh, they'll get, they'll tell you what's up. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, the car coming through here. Off, there could be critters in there battling. I'm creeping slowly. Hello. Doesn't go in very far. Maybe 10, 15 feet in. It expands out, but uh, no way in hell I'm going in there. This is soft dirt. It's not rock. Who would do this? It's very old. Very old. Anyone can tell me this? Why this would be here? And what crazy nut would go in it? This is part of the debris field. Hmm. That worries me. Crazy people. Back in the day. Mm. 
Daredevil ship. So we're coming back out to the other side. As you can tell, there's the towers. So this mine, excuse me, this mill operated 24 hours a day. And uh, through the readings I've done, it sounded like, uh, it seems like the, uh, the town kind of grew accustomed to the noise, the clanking noise of the volcanic rock tumbling in these big drums, crushing up the ore to extract the borax from low grade. They're concentrating the borax here. We're out at the, uh, we're out at the building off in the distance there from the mill. Um, this appears to be a water tank. Um, I can't get in there to see, but uh, it does look like this thing was supplying water somehow to somewhere. So there's no way in, but uh, I'll try and get up there and see if I can get the camera up and over the one of the window ledges. But it's a story up. Um, but you do see valves uh, coming out both sides, the east and west side of the building. We're now approaching the west side, right around 10 o'clock. And you can see there's one of the valves that would turn on and off the water in the building. Um, I don't know much history of this building, but uh, I don't know if it was supplying water to the plant and or this campsite. This campsite looks to be about one by one square miles. Or more, I mean, I'm used to seeing this stuff. There's, there's glass all over the place, way off into the distance, way out there, you can see glints of glass and it goes on forever. I would say that, oh my goodness, I just realized something. But uh, this was a campsite. Um, I'm almost positive, if this was a campsite, I'm almost positive that this was supplying water to this campsite. <sighs> people actually camping on the other side of the bush. I'm going to try and keep quiet uh, or away from that area. There's the mill area. That's how far away we are from the mill. I'm thinking the mill workers probably were camping here. Did you see that mountain right there? Dead center? I recognize that mountain in the picture. The cat. I'm in the right spot. I'm in the right spot. I see a road going up there. Holy cow, wow, geez. Okay, I've got some more research to do, but that mountain right there is key to my success, I think, and what I need to do is figure out where these features are. These unique features going across in this, in this little rock coming out of the ground. Little, big. But up in these hills over here, the cabin. Back to this guy. This appears to be a water tower or a water tank. Not sure if it's coming out of the ground or whether or not it was coming from somewhere else. So just like in Renoville, they would pile their trash in areas and then burn it, I would assume. That's why you see stuff just kind of gathered up, like here's the glass pile. It's amazing how much stuff is out here. The water tank. Let me try and get this thing up and over one of these ledges. One second, guys. Okay, so I've climbed up onto this deal and uh, let's make a peek in here I'll have to do some voiceover on this because I don't know what I'm looking at through this little viewfinder but there it is Whew. 
and I conveniently drop my sunglasses down this hole. <laughs> my sunglasses are down there. Later.